Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 2005 superhero teen comedy, Sky High. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I want to give a special shout out for Bobby uh, for uh, requesting uh, this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below, and I will try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Now, Sky High uh, is a film that, to me personally, is soaring under the radar. And I think that it should be talked about more. I think it's a legitimately good comic book superhero film. And honestly, I like this more than a lot of the more recent Marvel films that I've seen. Or just recent comic book films in general. I think it captures the spirit of, of comics really well, and I, I just really like the cast of characters, and I also like the world that the film is set in. I think it's a nice, unique, fun spin on uh, a, a typical sort of topic that you've seen in other films, like X-Men and so on, with a superhero school. But this time around, the main focus of... The plot is about the school and about the students going to the superhero school. It's not a afterthought like it is in the X-Men films or in some other movies that might deal with uh, similar concepts. The film is directed by Mike Mitchell. And I think Mike Mitchell did a, a relatively uh, marvelous job with this film. I really love the uh, zany, fun, comic book style energy that he infused the film with. I think his background in comedy definitely did pay off here because he didn't take things too seriously. And this isn't the kind of film where you need to do that. So I think he f was able to find the right balance of humor as well as uh, teen drama. And when it comes to the more action-packed moments they still had a good amount of punch to them uh even though this isn't really what i would call an action film there's some action in it there's some moments where the heroes or the sidekicks show their abilities in combat but it's not really going to deliver on the action front compared to other films like it but what is there still has a, a, a good amount of spirit to it and on top of that, I just think it's a well-directed film from the way that the angles are set up or the different techniques that are uh, showcased throughout the film. I, I really do feel that Mike Mitchell did a great job. And I think he honestly deserves a little more credit because I think this is an example of a guy who maybe if he got more films, more chances to show that he could uh, really pull off uh, a bigger kind of movie, maybe he could have had the trajectory that some other bigger, more well-known directors uh, in the comic book genre wound up having. I mean, for instance, the Russo brothers, they didn't direct much in terms of action or let alone uh, comic book style stuff uh, until The Winter Soldier. Because prior to that, they did stuff like You, Me, and Dupree. Uh, and I, I, I just think it's too bad overall that a lot of the people involved with this film didn't really get to do a whole lot more after this. I mean, other than like Kurt Russell and of course, and, and yeah, Michael Angarano got a bit part in, um, I think the Forbidden Kingdom or something. Well, it wasn't really a bit part. It was a major part, but that really didn't do him any favors. And a lot of the other people involved here just didn't really wind up going anywhere it's like this wasn't used as a launching pad for bigger and brighter careers mike mitchell included uh he still got work afterwards but it's not like he directed a lot of major feature films after sky high i mean he did he did a lot of stuff that was just direct to video or a lot of animated stuff. I mean, he did Shrek Forever After. He did the Chipwrecked movie, the Alvin the Chipmunks. And he did Trolls. He did Lego Movie 2. So he did a lot of animated stuff. In terms of live action stuff, though, really didn't get a lot to do other than maybe the live action bits and a SpongeBob film. But that was about it. 
the film features a script by Paul Hernandez, Bob Schooley, and Mark McCorkle. And I like this script. I think this script does a really good job taking a John Hughes teen drama and toning some things down a little bit for younger audiences, but still maintaining the same kind of vibe and then throwing in a lot of comic book spirit. This is as close as you'll ever get to a John Hughes teen drama but with a superhero flair. And uh, if you like John Hughes teen dramas, I think you'll definitely get some enjoyment out of Sky High. I think the writers intended it to be something like that because of the way that things are set up in terms of the different conflicts throughout the film or certain uh, interactions with characters. I mean, for instance, the most of the film features music that is covers of popular 80s songs. So it really does seem like it is intended to be a homage or a tribute of sorts to John Hughes. And like a lot of these John Hughes teen dramas, the characters are really well written. They are relatable, they are strong, uh, they have various different traits that make them stand out from one another, and first and foremost, they're likable. I really think the script just absolutely soars when it comes to creating likable and engaging characters. And there are a lot of characters in this story. So you have a lot, all the sidekicks, you have Will Stronghold, you have uh, Layla, you have a, a lot of these different things going on. You have the stuff with um, uh, War and Peace, who has a serious conflict with uh, Will because of the fact that his father sent his father to prison. So it's one of those things where there's a there's a genuine conflict there and it gets very heated and uh it it, it definitely adds an extra dynamic to things uh he's not just your typical school bully or school rival uh there's more there's more to that and i also like the whole love triangle between uh layla who has a crush on her longtime best friend will and uh, the new girl, Gwen. Uh, and speaking of Gwen, I love how this script handles her character, how she starts off one way, and then as you get to know her more and see more scenes with her, then you start to really sense that there's something really not right about her. And then when it reveals the, the twist at the end, spoiler that uh, she's actually the main villain, I thought that was really clever. And the first time around I saw this film, I didn't see that twist coming. So I think that was handled really well by the screenwriters. And I like the, the uh, relationship that Will has with his parents, his more famous, more well-known superhero parents. And I like the idea that his powers uh, don't automatically show up for him so there there's a delay with them i like that that creates some nice drama as well with this whole idea that maybe he won't ever get his powers and what is that going to do when it comes to the relationship with his parents and i think it's got a lot of good messages uh in terms of a lot of the statements that it's trying to make in terms of acceptance and so on and there's a lot of creativity in terms of uh, some really clever lines, some nice bits of satire of comic book tropes. And overall, I, I just really like this script. The only problem that I have with it is that there are some moments with the humor where it's a little bit too juvenile. Like, oh, I went, I, I regret to inform you that I went boom, boom. You know, stuff like that. We're like, oh, really? But. I get why it's there because it's trying to further uh, showcase that these adults are now babies because that's the the weapon that uh, the uh, villain Royal Pain uses. 
I, I, I honestly like the uh, idea of that as well. Uh, a gun that turns people into babies. It's like the babality from Mortal Kombat. Um, and it's a film where it doesn't necessarily wow you in terms of the action. I will say that. If you're going into this ex looking for some really amazing, exciting action sequences, that's not really what you're going to get here. But I don't think that was really the intent. The action that is there is still fun. It's still lively enough. Uh, there's still a good amount of creativity. Um, and speaking of creativity, just the, the various different ways that it showcases the different abilities of these... Uh, teenagers at this superhero school uh you have this nerdy guy who you think is going to be a sidekick but he's actually a hero because he's he can turn into a giant rock monster and it turns a lot of things on its head for instance uh one of the main bullies has super speed and it's a heavy set guy he, he's not a skinny beanpole type like his uh, partner, his partner, his uh, buddy, he's he's a skinny bean bowl, bean pole type, but he has stretching powers. But his, but the other guy, he's overweight, but he's he's got super speed. I like that. Um, there are some powers that are lame, like for for instance, this guy that just glows faintly. But I think that's the point. It's supposed to be funny. And there are some moments where uh, that really does provide a, a few smirks or a few chuckles. There's another uh, character who just turns into a guinea pig, which I think that was very limiting. And I think it was a one note kind of thing. And, and yeah, the glowing things, a one note kind of thing. But that just made it so there was too many one note kind of things with the abilities of these sidekicks. So. Uh, I, I think they really could have honestly improved upon uh, the abilities of, of some of these characters, at least made it a little bit more interesting, because it's just not that interesting to turn into a guinea pig or a, a kid to melt. Like, it's just one of the, or like a kid to faintly glow. So it's one of those things It's like you really could have uh, improved upon that a little bit. But... Other than those kind of things, I, I, I think it's a charming, fun story. Uh, it's got a lot of good characters. I like the bus driver guy, too. Uh, and I like the fact that he was the son of two heroes, and he never got his powers. But he gets a moment in the end where he gets to, to be a hero. Um, and I, 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 I really like the growing budding romantic uh tension between uh will and his best friend layla uh and uh i i like the fact that the film ends on a high note as well and it, it leaves things open for a sequel that i honestly wish happened but it never did i know a lot of the people involved with this film they signed on for more movies a uh, potential TV show, but none of that ever got off the ground because the film just didn't do that great. It cost $35 million and made $86 million worldwide. This isn't factoring in uh, marketing or advertising budgets. Uh, it made a profit, but for Disney, it was disappointing. It didn't make as much money as they probably expected or would have hoped that it that it would have because this is in 2005 and superhero films were starting to become big money makers i mean this is around the time of you know spider-man and so on so they were thinking they were going to get something like that but that that, that did not happen with with uh, sky high so it's got a good script i also think it has a good cast uh you have kurt russell yeah, Kurt fucking Russell himself as the commander. Uh, I thought it was really cool to see Kurt Russell in another Disney movie. And I thought it was a great bit of casting for him to play a kind of blowhard Superman kind of character. Um, 
you also have uh, Kelly Preston, uh, who plays his wife and uh, his partner, uh, Jetstream. You even have like Linda Carter, uh, the 70s Wonder Woman. She plays the principal of the uh, superhero high school. You've got Michael Ian Garano, who plays Will Stronghold. I really liked his performance. I thought he was likable. Uh, he had a good amount of personality and charisma. I thought he had just great chemistry with uh, a, a lot of the other members of the cast, in particular Danielle Panabaker, and um, good, good, a good uh, um, back and forth with his parents as well. I thought he did a good job portraying a lot of the things that they wanted this character to have. He's a little nerdy. He's not your typical kind of jock superhero type. So uh, he's someone that if you're not from that sort of demographic, like you can still uh, connect with him because he, he, he still seems like kind of an outsider. And when he has to get going and he gets his powers and he has to fight for the school and for his friends, uh, he's formidable in that position as well. Uh, Daniel Panabaker, I, I can't sing enough praises to her. I thought she was sweet. I thought she had a, a good amount of um, spunk to her. Uh, I, I really love this performance. I, I, I think it's honestly one of the better young uh, teen girl kind of performances I've seen. Uh, because there's a lot of different nuances, a lot of different things, a lot of different emotions that she goes through, and I, I just, I just really love that character, and 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 big, re a big reason why that character works so well is not just because of the writing, but really because of Danielle, because she really breathes so much life into that character. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, she was a great bad guy, bad girl, like she was really good. She did a great job. Of keeping you off the, the, the scent initially, thinking she is this too good to be true, um, perfect girlfriend. But then she was is able to just flip things on a dime and be twisted and mean and be a, a, a real bitch. And I, I thought that Mary really did nail those different sides of, of that character. Uh, honestly, I, I would have preferred to not have had Patrick Warburton voice Royal Pain. I just, I, I get why he does it, but I would have been fine. It was just Mary Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth Winstead with like a voice changer or something made her voice sound a little bit deeper. I don't think you need Pat, needed Patrick Warburton. Stephen Strait, I thought did also, he also did a great job as War and Peace. Um... He's the, the the guy who, in a lot of ways, is like the nemesis of, of Will uh, until they have to work together and they, they find a mutual respect for one another and Will also becomes friends. Well, not... Will does become friends with him eventually, but uh, Warren becomes friends with Will's group of sidekicks. Uh, I would say out of the out of the main cast, though, he's the last main standout for me, because I, I thought he did a good job showing the character's fiery personality, and you know the whole sort of um, edgy outcast kind of thing, similar to Bender in a lot of ways from um, the Breakfast Club, kind of the same kind of vibe, um, but he's got a he's got a softness to him. He's got a heart. And I, I felt that he definitely did showcase um, that aspect of the character, uh, as well as, of course, the more uh, macho, super kind of uh, stuff involving uh, the performance. Um, the rest of the cast, though, DJ Daniels, who plays Ethan Bank, uh, the popsicle kid who can melt and eh, just there for me kelly vitz another one that was just there for me who turns into the guinea pig nicholas braun uh he i there were some moments with him the guy who goes in the dark but really compared to the other main cast members just kind of so so 
Uh, same thing for the the friends of Gwen, like Malika Hack, who played Penny, the one that can multiply herself, uh, or Jake Sandvig as Lash, or Will Harris as Speed. Um, Bruce Campbell is in this. He plays uh, Coach Boomer, the guy who separates uh, the class into uh, groups of heroes and sidekicks. And uh, it's always fun to see Bruce Campbell. And uh, he definitely uh, tried to steal the show at times with his with his uh, bombastic performance. Kevin, he- Kevin uh, Heffernan, he played uh, the bus driver, Ron Wilson. Uh, and... I thought he did a great job too. I definitely wanted to mention him because I really liked that character. He was just a guy, just a regular guy who's the bus driver for a uh, superhero uh, high school. And you could tell that the actor was having a lot of fun with it. And he becomes a superhero because he fell in a vat of toxic waste. And now. He's got superpowers and he's fighting robots and, and protecting the city. So good for Ron Wilson. Uh, of course, Leachman also has a bit role as the nurse. You also have two alumni of uh, Kids in the Hall. You've got Dave Foley, who plays All-American Boy, the the commander's old sidekick. And you also have Kevin McDonald, who plays Professor Medulla, the mad scientist uh, teacher with the big oversized brain, like the leader from the Incredible Hulk comics. Um, and those two were, were a delight. I, I really loved their, their takes on those characters. It was, it was great to see, uh, those two in this kind of film. You can, you can definitely see a lot of the kids in the hall quirks, uh, with, with their, uh, performances when it comes to, uh, those two, uh, characters. Tom Kenny is also in this, the voice of SpongeBob. He plays one of the witnesses, that sees a will uh, preventing a sky high from collapsing on their house at uh, in the end of the film. So I thought that was kind of cool this, to see Tom Kenny. Um, but yeah, overall, I do. I think it's a good cast. Uh, the cinematography is by Shelley Johnson, and it's serviceable for this kind of film. Um, nothing amazing. It's not going to make you uh, instantly remember it or you're not going to reference it when it comes to examples of wonderful cinematography, but it's still decent enough. Same thing goes for the editing by Peter Admanson. Uh, the music by Michael Giacchino, it's not one of his best scores, but it's it's there. Uh, I, I think it serves the film rather well. Uh, I would say really the 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 heartbeat of the film isn't necessarily the score. It's the covers of these 80 songs like melt with you, um, by bowling for soup. And I thought the film went by at a good pace. It's only like a hundred minutes. I didn't think there were a lot of moments where it, it slipped up or it dragged. I thought for the most part, it soared through a lot of the, uh, parts of the plot rather well and rather quickly uh yeah speaking of the plot there are some moments where it's predictable there are some moments where it's a little cliched but i think some of that was intentional because it's trying to be a homage to uh john hughes style teen dramas um and there are some parts where the budget does show like it is 35 million but that's that's not necessarily the biggest budget for a comic book kind of film. So there are some moments where the CGI in particular doesn't really hold up that well. Um, but then there were some other moments where it looks pretty good. Like, for instance, the, the battle that uh, the commander and Jetstream have with this giant robot. I thought that looked really good. Um, and uh, there are some other sequences like when when uh war and peace first fights will in, in in the um cafeteria or the sequence with uh war and peace and will playing the game of uh capture the citizen or save the citizen that's what it is save the citizen and they're trying to stop lash and and 
what, what is the name? Speed, Speedy. Like I know his, his I know his name is not Speedy. <laughs> He's not Speedy Gonzalez. Um, uh, I'm just looking it up. His name is Speed. Okay, so I was right. It's just not Speedy. Um, but yeah, that was a that was a really um, well uh, done sequence in terms of the effects. But and and so was the stuff with the pacifier. But there were some other moments where it's kind of janky. Got to be honest, some of the green screen work. But for the most part, though, not bad. Uh, one other thing I want to mention in terms of the effects is uh, when uh, Layla uses her uh, plant powers. I thought that looked really good. Or when uh, Penny multiplies herself. So it, it, it's not the kind of effects that are going to wow you like some of the other X-Men films at the time or some of the other superhero films of the time or definitely not now. But it's not something that's going to make you think that this is like some direct-to-video, made-for-TV, made-for-Disney-channel kind of movie. And, yeah, I, I honestly cannot recommend the film enough. I, I've always enjoyed this film ever since I was a kid. I would always catch it on TV, uh, in particular on the Disney Channel, whenever it was on. It has a certain charm to it that I think is genuinely spirited and genuinely fun and the heart that it has it's really big and it beats loud and you can just tell that everyone involved has a lot of passion for what they're doing and on top of that they are just having a blast playing around with this world of superheroes and I also feel that despite the fact that it's a film about a superhero high school, it's one of the best high school films that I can think of in terms of showing what it's like being in high school and being a part of the group of outcasts going up against the jocks or the popular kids. And, and I really felt that it just encapsulated so much of what it's like growing up as a teenager and dealing with a lot of the different strifes and a lot of the different uh, tribulations as well as a lot of the highs that that come from those moments in life i think even though it's about these superhero kids or superhero teens th there are a lot of moments here where i was like that was my high school experience so i i feel that that just makes the film really excellent when it comes to what it's trying to to do it's trying to be that kind of movie and it's trying to put you in that kind of mindset and i think it, it really does excel when it comes to that so yeah um it's a shame it's a shame that sky high didn't do as well when it came out uh i know that it's gotten a cult following over the years though and i definitely deserves it and i'm hoping that one day Disney might revisit this this uh, film and might do a, a sequel for Disney Plus like they are doing with Hocus Pocus or they might do a TV show. I think it would be a great pick for them to do a Disney Plus TV series because superheroes are really big and really popular and this can give you something that's not just Marvel and if they want to, they could make it a crossover if they really wanted to, they could be like Sky High is a part of the MCU. If they wanted to go that route, they could. But I, I would like it more if they didn't. If they did a Sky High series that's a sequel to the first film, a continuation of things, uh, but with new characters, I think that could have a lot of potential because of the fact that you can do more in terms of stories with a show than you can with a feature film. And... You can do more with character development or uh, other sort of things. You could be even more creative. And on top of that, you're not shackled to Marvel and whatever phase is going on. So you can just do whatever you, whatever you want to do creatively and with the story. So I think that would be a really good idea for Disney to at least consider going forward when it comes to original content for uh, Disney+. Plus. 
But anyway, uh, that's my uh, thoughts and my review of Sky High. And as always, I'll see you later. See ya.